Hi, I'm Samuel Prather, founder of Go Music and Reason user since 2003. Welcome to A Reason to Create. Today, what I wanted to talk about was simply whether or not it's still important to learn music theory. In order to answer that question, we have to first know what music theory is. So in terms of music theory, there's a couple different ways that people think about it. It can be reading music, it can be understanding the form of music and the way that harmony works together, or it can also just be experience with the way that music works. I happen to think that there's still some value to music theory, even though you can do so much with plugins and players in Reason. If you use players and samples all the time, you definitely might get the impression that music theory is just a thing of the past and it doesn't have any use for you in your production now, but I would beg to differ on a couple fronts. One is reading. So reading, I would say, is probably the least valuable skill to a producer out of the three types that we talked about. Um, if you're not an arranger or composer dealing with large ensembles and need to get complex arrangements out to people to rehearse, then there's probably not a very good argument for investing your time in the reading side. However, being able to read and play an instrument opens up all types of doors in terms of the way that you ingest information about music. There are different types of reading and all of them have different values in different settings. So for some people, the ability to read notes really well to sight read is just something that is non-negotiable. If you're doing like a stage play or something where you're dealing with a really large ensemble, it's probably a good chance that sight reading really well is something that you have to have. On the jazz side of things, being able to interpret a lead sheet might be more valuable than being able to sight read standard notation really well. It just depends on the gig. And the reason we're having this conversation in the first place is because there are tons of amazing professional musicians who don't read at all and they just have really great memories and really great understanding of song form and the way that music works. But in my opinion, if you are a producer, the most important types of theory to know are the way that chords interact with each other, what chords lead to one another, and song structure. Now these are things that you can get from a couple places if you don't already understand these things really well, but I would say these are non-negotiable must-haves for everybody. A lot of times people teach with scales first and arpeggios so they can learn how to facilitate the instrument. I would say as a producer, you have a different set of scales or a different set of principles that you might want to focus on first. If you can't play an instrument at all, you still want to be able to understand song form. What is the verse? What is the chorus? What is the pre-hook? These are the things that allow you to communicate with musicians even if you can't read standard notation. You have to understand the way that songs are put together. The second thing I would probably put on my list is understanding and being able to hear a 1-4-5 progression, both in major and minor, and understanding the way that they lead to each other. 1-4-5 progressions are the basis of most pop music, and if you're not hip to what the concept is, I do have some videos that I'm gonna be working on explaining the way that these things work, but just understand that most of the music that you listen to is probably comprised of one, four, five progressions just placed differently. There's another type of theory that I think all musicians should know and definitely studio engineers and people who produce should know, but unfortunately it's rare for people to actually put the time in to figure this stuff out. If you're making beats or producing for someone, you should understand the basics of mixing. The idea of getting a clean recording and how to fit things together in a mix and place them so that they have some separation and clarity. These are things that will separate your tracks even if you're going to pay someone else to do the mixing and mastering. This is not something that you should slack on. So whether you're a producer who is just a novice, you've got GarageBand for free on your laptop, and you're making beats just for fun and for your friends, or whether you're somebody who maybe has sold a couple beats but doesn't really do this full time, even if you're a professional who has found a way to make 
like this you're living and you still haven't figured out some of these things, it's worth it not just for your own self-development, but it's worth it for all the people who are listening to your music for you to invest some time in knowing the way that this stuff works. I've been teaching music for a very long time and I've came up with a system that kind of goes through some of these basics first. And this guy named Andrew Huang pretty much beat me to the punch in terms of putting out some of those concepts. So I don't have my own video to post to you yet about how I can put all this stuff together in the compact package, but he has a great video teaching a lot of that in 30 minutes. If you don't do anything else for yourself this week, watch this video a couple times so you can familiarize yourself with the basics of music theory so you're not just floating in the dark. You don't want to make a great beat by accident. I want you to be able to have duplicatable results that are marketable to your clients and to your fans. I've heard from a lot of musicians that don't read that being able to read takes away from your ability to groove and kind of live in the moment when you're playing. There's some truth to it because if you're glued to a piece of paper when you're trying to perform, then that does put a barrier between you and the people that you're playing with. But I've never met somebody that who can groove, who has a good sense of time, who actually gets worse in their playing just because they learn to read. Learning to read doesn't mean you have to stop memorizing music so that you can internalize things and react with people that you're playing with, but it does mean that you can communicate with those people a lot easier and a lot faster. I want to be clear that as a professional musician, I've worked with all kinds of people and traveled all over the world. Not everybody reads, it's not a requirement to be great. Not everybody understands theory, it's not a requirement to be great, but it does help. And sometimes being able to communicate in that way is the difference between getting a gig and not getting one. Now, I know some of you might be saying, oh, you know, my favorite producers don't read, they don't know any theory, they just get in there with the NPC and they make it happen. That might be true for a few lucky folks, but that's not something that I would bank on, especially if I was doing this for a living. If you don't know anything about this stuff, I'm not saying hang up your hat and don't do any production stuff or make any beats until you understand all the things we talked about. What I am saying is if you don't understand these things and maybe collaborate with someone who does so that your stuff will benefit from that knowledge as well. The other thing I almost forgot was the best teacher for all of these things is listening to music. If you want to learn about mixing, if you want to learn about singing in pitch or playing in tune or grooving, all of that stuff is being taught to you passively when you listen to good music. So don't confine yourself just to a couple of your favorite artists. Listen to older stuff. Listen to the artists that they listen to. Listen to the artists that their favorite artists listen to and learn the real craft of how music should sound. Maybe take a class or two or study with a teacher. If you don't play an instrument, pick up a guitar, pick up a keyboard, and figure out how some of those basic things work together so that you can work in concert with musicians that you're producing. I hope that everything that I've said today has been a help to someone. Maybe you don't read very well, maybe you don't know music theory at all, maybe you've been intimidated by just the whole idea of it. I want you to know that it is not nearly as complicated as people would have you think. There might be a whole bunch of different names for stuff, but there's really only 12 notes and there's only four chords. It's really just about how you use them. If you like the way that I've been explaining things, go ahead and hit the like, subscribe button, hit the bell so you know when I come out with new material. What's your music theory background? Are you a producer? Are you a musician? Uh, do you use it sometimes? Do you use it never? I'd like to know in the comments. Let me know what you think. I'm completely independent, so I would definitely appreciate if you checked out my music, maybe grabbed a t-shirt, all the links are below. I'm Samuel Prather. I hope I gave you a reason to create.